Hi, this is Steve Prattley, and today we're going to be talking about how to reverse engineer some of your competitors' traffic data to find out where they're getting traffic from uh, and to uncover some new opportunities. So the background to this is that I spent this weekend just past at Dan Bradbury's Success Summit, which is uh, an entrepreneurs' conference in London uh, sponsored by Infusionsoft. And one of the speakers there is a guy called Russell Brunson. And Russell is uh, a US-based uh, internet marketer. He runs all kinds of business. He has a, a diabetic supplements business. Uh, he has a software business called ClickFunnels. Um, he runs all kinds of different stuff. And he was talking about his process for um, working your way through from the landing page right the way through a competitor's site. So you can see the entirety of how they're making money through the whole sales process. And also he gave a little tip about um, a tool called SimilarWeb, which will help you try and find out where the traffic's coming from. Now, I managed to get hold of Russell during the break and was asking him about how he finds his niches. And he came up um, with a, a really neat little trick actually, uh, which is using SimilarWeb to see what other streams of traffic are around and are there other opportunities out there and are there other um, sectors that are worth getting into so I'm just going to talk through um, how something like this might work okay. so we're going to start off with a site which uh, which Russell mentioned himself which is called uh, survival life and let's just go here so this is an American site which is all about getting ready for Armageddon pretty much it's all about hiding out in the woods with guns and knives and it's um it's a huge growth area in America in particular and so he would take a site like this and then go to similar web put in the name of the site and straight away you can see you know, it's got some fairly solid traffic estimates there um, about a million views a month, I think that is, or visits a month, sorry. Um, mostly US traffic, and it tells you where it's coming from. So a lot of direct traffic, which means um, that will either be coming from emails or people that literally just know the domain names. Um, a fair amount of social media. Um, some display ads, and I'll just uh, show you some of the display ad titles. So relatively small amount but you can see here uh, there's a site called Instructables which is uh, a DIY project site um, and back up at the top as well you can see that they're driving quite a lot of traffic back to Instructables uh, and also uh, DIY ready and then if you look at some of the other sites that are driving traffic to this survival life site um, Five gallon ideas, which are things you can do with five gallon buckets. Um, homestead and survival, so that's in a similar kind of niche to them. Another survival site. So you've actually got, oh, and here we are, uh, DIY ready. So you've got uh, DIY ready and Instructables, both DIY sites, uh, which are driving traffic and also receiving traffic from this survival life site. So. Now, that shows a couple of things. One is it shows that the DIY niche itself is a pretty big niche. So let's have a look at this Instructables site. Uh, it's in the top, let's go to similar web's own analysis, own analysis. So it's in the top three or 400 sites on the web. So that's a fairly substantial amount of traffic that they're getting. So that itself shows that you know DIY and um, there's a whole mix of things on here, crafting projects and all sorts of other stuff as well. As uh, just take a look at the site. Um, so you've got craft projects, you've got um, little niche things here for watches. There's some computer and electronic stuff. So that shows firstly that the DIY niche is one that's probably worth going after if there is traffic of that scale available in it. Uh, but what it's also showing is that uh, there's a big overlap between the survival niche 
and the DIY niche. So that gives you a couple of other opportunities. It gives you websites that you, you now know have a very similar audience. So even if they're about slightly different subjects, if it's the same audience, that could be a good advertising destination. So you can uh, buy banner ad space from them, possibly look at uh, swapping uh, email lists or driving promotions to each other's sites, uh, finding projects which might be of interest to both audiences and running uh, webinars or promotions. There's all kinds of collaboration that you can do when you find uh, sectors which have got a strong overlap with yours but don't actually compete head to head in the same niche. So I think that's, um, you know, that was a really handy tip from Russell from the point of view of finding niches, but also you can expand that out into where you can find traffic uh, for your own projects as well. Um, just by using tools like SimilarWeb. Um, there's another one called SpyFu. Uh, I'll just show this here. Uh, there's another one called SpyFu. Which, if you're in the UK, has quite a lot of UK uh, traffic data as well. So, if you're struggling to find data on UK sites, which tend to be lower traffic figures than the American ones, uh, then that's a site that you can have a look at as well. So, um, take a look at both of those. Take a look at the traffic data that your competitors are getting and uh, see if you can find some other sectors that have got a good, strong overlap with your own. Um, that you can use to boost your traffic from maybe some slightly unexpected areas. Um, I hope that's useful. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link back to our blog uh, where you can leave comments. And if you're on our blog at visiblybetter.net, then you can leave comments below. And also maybe sign up to our email list uh, where I'll be sharing some more tips like this each week.